Uh, you are looking at a major sell-off on Wall Street, no doubt about it. All three major indices down about 2% or more at this hour. The Dow briefly dipping below 600 points. It is off 589 now. But the Dow and the S&P 500 on the, uh, are on pace right now for their biggest drop since all the way back in February 8th, where we saw that tremendous volatility. All right, let's get up to Charlie Gasparino. Charlie, what's your take on all of this? Is this all tariff-driven, or, or is there a number of, item, number of things play, in play today? Today. Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's generally concern about the, 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 the Trump economic message going forward and how tariffs play into that. Mm. Remember, this is a kind of convoluted economic uh, fiscal policy that we have here. On one hand, we have low taxes, right? We have less regulation, right? Mm. Uh, uh, we have the we, we have an administration that wants to end net neutrality, so you think they want to be hands-off in terms of uh, on businesses and things of that nature. On the other hand, you have, you have the president talking tariffs. Uh, today, I believe there were oral arguments in the AT&T Time Warner case just began. So he's looking to break up a deal that would that would create some sort of efficiencies because of sort of very amorphous beliefs that this deal would raise prices of of content, even though we know that content is ubiquitous on on the internet and every place else. So uh, you know this is a, and this is an economic message that is hard to digest at times. We're having one of those indigestion uh, uh, <laughs> bouts right now. I, I, I often call it a puke. It's more than indigestion. But just so you know, that's a market term. They call it a puke. Of course. And uh, as, you, as, you, as you try to, yes, yeah, very technical. As you try to, <laughs> well, that, you know, traders are like that, right? So you, as you try to digest this, what's going on? I will say this, though, and here's the great unknowns for the average investor and why I would say don't panic. Um, <laughs> when it really, really comes down to it, okay? Uh, the devil is in the details of um, corporate earnings and GDP. And those are the two things you have to keep an eye on if you want to buy stocks. Uh, yes, trade wars are never good. Uh, that, that actually hurts GDP and, and, and corporate earnings. That, that's, why, that's why the markets are trading off. But you're going to have to see what he does and see how that translates into numbers. Because we're getting a massive tax cut coming, right? Right. We're getting, we, we have an administration that has pulled back on a lot of regulations, even as it's done some sort of uh, thrown a couple curveballs, like going after this AT&T Time Warner merger. Mm -hmm. If you put those things together, that's generally positive for stocks. If you see the bounce of GDP above 3%, that's a buy signal for stocks usually. If you see if you see corporate earnings start to ramp up because of those because of the, the massive corporate tax cuts, again, that's usually good for stocks. So you know this is you know I'm not in favor of this thing, and I'll tell you of trade wars, and I'll tell you I right. agree with your last your last guess. It, it always hurts in the long run, and it will decrease at the margin. It will decrease corporate earnings and right. will hurt the economy. But Ashley. We have, you know, this has to be, look, I mean, this is not like, you know, it's not binary, right? There's a million things in factor here, including the fact that we have businesses reacting also to tax cuts, repatriation of, of wealth overseas. And Charlie? And, and regulation. And what about the reaction? I was on the air with uh, Stuart Varney today when we got news that John Dowd had resigned. Yeah, and I we saw, saw the market take another leg down. How much of what's going on at the White House and the daily shakeup? How much does that have an impact on the market? Yeah, I mean that's that's that talks about stability. It's funny yeah. you were when you, you that was on when you were on with uh, Stuart. Yeah. Uh, a couple back in December, I was on Stuart's show where I broke a small story, but mm. I, I gave you this caveat. I said, listen, um, you know, the president is telling people he expects, this is in December, he expects to be uh, exonerated out of the Russian probe by the, sometime in the beginning of the year. Well, as you mm -hmm. know, we're way past the beginning of the year. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, the one fly, and I said, but you shouldn't, but what people are telling the president, hold your horses because Mueller can expand the investigation uh, into your personal finances, which, as you know, he has. And, you know, that could be a problem for your presidency. And the markets trade off on that. I mean, one of the, one of the sort of threats to the market right now is, is Mueller. I mean, it's increasingly, be, you know, very touchy on any Mueller news. But I, I really think that was that's sort of like um, that's like the cream on top of that's like the foam on top of this beer. I and mean, then on thing, top of that, Charlie, you had the Fed yesterday that you know I, I guess you could say hawkish. It certainly gave pause to the market to say two more rate hikes this year, three next year. Um, I think that was a I, reality uh, reality well, take for the markets as well. Yeah, what I the way I explained that on Cavuto's show is like Pete, and before the uh, before his. Powell's remarks, yeah. the, the Fed chairman, it was like, pay, pay attention, 
pay real close attention to the to the music, to the chamber music around, you know, the the sort of the the, the sort of the stuff around the, the tax cuts and how he explains it, and that will that'll that'll be a, a signal to the market. Now, one of the things that I think the market sold off about is his when he made some comments on tariffs. If you notice, he is now saying that he I mean he said he doesn't think it's a big deal for for the economy. I'm paraphrasing what he said. Yeah. You could get his exact quote. He wasn't alarmist about it, but he did mention it. It is on the Fed's radar. That if you remember if you look at back back at the tape, the market started selling off on that. I believe yesterday we closed the day down marginally. Am I am I right? I mean it wasn't yes. six hundred points, but it was right. down. And it came after those remarks and it was up something like 200 points in, in, intraday. So that's what you have here. You, this, this market is really freaked on trade. Um, it is <laughs> like it is literally on edge on everything about trade. And here's the other thing I, I think which is which mar the markets are saying. You know, there's no doubt everybody and their uncle. And I read I, I've read some of the stuff that Peter Navar Navarro has yes. put out there. He's the Trump's economic advisor. Very tough on China. And I agree with I mean, it, it, it takes an idiot not to agree that China is looking to screw us every which way. <laughs> right. OK, but but, but what the markets are saying is something along the lines of what your last guest said. You know, there is a way of threading this needle where you, you don't use protectionism as a blunt instrument. The markets are worried about the blunt instrument. They don't know if Trump knows how to, the president knows how to use it as a, as a he knows how to negotiate his way around this stuff. Right. And, and that's what they're worried about. Now, maybe he does. All right. Maybe Great he does. Great synopsis, Charlie Casparino.